Hi guys! I'm Scully and welcome to Scully's Creations. So today we are talking about level one beginner plants. And the reason I say level one is because these are going to be plants that you water about once a month or maybe every seven days. So it's one that you can get, not worry about the watering so much, um, and just enjoy your plant really. And again, very, very beginner, beginner friendly. So if you like these types of videos, please don't forget to like and subscribe, all the things, notification bell, so you'll be alerted the next time I post another video. So number one on my list, and some of these you may already know, but number one is going to be the snake plant. So what's really cool about the snake, snake plant is that one, it's low light tolerant, meaning you can put it in a pretty dark corner of your house or your home, but it does need some light. So, so oh, oh, another thing, I'm going to go over these by like light requirements. So the one, the plants that need the highest amount of light, I'm going to go ahead and talk about those last. So low to high light. So that's why the snake plant is number one on my list. And what's really cool also about the snake plant is that there's so many different varieties. So I currently have this one. There's some that look like fingers. There's some that have a little yellow on the outside and they all require the same care. So low light, uh, still needs some light, but you can put it in a pretty far corner and be okay um, as long as it gets like some, some dapple light. Um, no windowless bathrooms or anything like that. Um, oh, actually, okay, so I don't have one of these plants, but the lowest, lowest, lowest light plant possible that I'm aware of, and I'll put a picture, but uh, it is a lucky bamboo or a dracaena. My boyfriend's mom has a beautiful dracaena in a windowless bathroom and it's thriving. She just has it in water. She just has it in a windowless bathroom. The only time it ever gets light is when people are in there um, and that's it. So that would absolutely have to be the number one, excuse me. So number one is the lucky bamboo or aka dracaena. Number two is going to be the snake plant. And like I said, there's many different varieties of the snake plant. So you don't have to just get the green one. You can, uh, there's even some that are like really dark and black. And if you watched my uh, Callaway video of the nursery, that's where they had it. And oh man, I, I don't know. There's just something about the really dark black and green that just was really cool to look at um and I think I want to get one of those next definitely because it just it looks so cool I'm I'm really digging the uh I'm really digging <laughs> so, uh I'm really liking dark colored plants my best friend got me a really dark calathea for my birthday it's the geo and man it's it's so cool and i think ever since then uh i've just been on a dark foliage kick so yeah so anyways um so yeah very very easy to care for and another thing that's really uh cool is so the watering on this again once a month maybe once every 10 days and that's, again, depending on the light requirement. So for example, I have mine in a south facing window and it gets about, it's it's kind of pulled back um, to the side. So it gets dapple light. And again, south facing window in Texas is still pretty high. So I water this oh, like about once every 10 days, once every 10 days. And then this, she's good. But what you want to do is make sure that you do have it in a well draining soil. So make sure there's some art, orchid bark, <laughs> make sure there's some orchid bark in there, some perlite to give it some more aeration. Um, and just to make it more uh, chunky of a mix, because this is very much a succulent. Like if you see the roots, 
Um, maybe I find I can find a picture of the roots, but they're really, really thick. So not only is the plant storing water up here, but it's storing water in those thick roots. And that's why they do not need to be watered um, so, so often. Uh, nothing like a calathea, for example. So yeah, it's number two beginner friendly plant every 10 days at most once a month type deal if you um if you have it more in a uh, brighter spot if you have it in a lower light situation definitely even longer as far as the watering goes in between waterings uh, at that point definitely once a month but just make sure that the soil is completely dry before you water it again. And then that would be your, that would be how to take care of this one. And the next one is very similar as far as care goes. And you know it, it's the ZZ. Now, there's two types of ZZs. There's this green foliage one, and then there's the Raven ZZ. And that one is black. Like I said, I'm on a I'm on a kick and I just need to repot that one, but I do have it. I'll show you a picture or a video of it. So anywho, uh, again, very, very similar light requirements and uh, watering requirements. So you can uh, put this in a area that doesn't get much light. It will be okay. It will survive. But the more uh, light you give it, I have noticed again, so this one is, I have a south facing window, so this, my whole room gets a whole bunch of light. That's why I have most of, pretty much all of my plants <laughs> in here. And so because of that, it is getting a lot of light. And I do notice that it does grow. I thought that this was going to be a slow growing plant, but it, it grows fairly not fairly quickly but definitely more than i thought it was gonna grow so yeah so again the more light uh and that's the same thing with the snake plant too the more light you give it the faster it will grow and that's exactly what's happening to this zz now the zz <laughs> the root system on the zz is crazy <laughs> and i say that because it's almost like um it's almost like a potato. Yeah, I'm a potato. Anyways, <laughs> if you know, you know. If you don't, well, it's all good. <laughs> so, yeah. So, here goes the stem. And right below it, it literally looks like a potato. And then it has thicker roots on, uh, on uh, attached to it. So, because of that, this one probably needs even less water than the snake plant again if you have it in a higher bright or a higher more light type of situation you are going to need to water it more but this is definitely a plant that you only want to water about once a month and they'll be fine they're just kind of set it forget it enjoy the plant um the oh you know what i didn't even talk about fertilizing excuse me i use liquid dirt and uh, fish water for my fertilizer and i do that i pretty i water with liquid dirt every other time or every time i water uh, just depending on how much i have on hand so that's what i do as far as the fertilizing goes um but what's great about liquid dirt is you can do that throughout the whole year so you don't uh, have to worry about when do I fertilize or how much do I fertilize? It's plant food and it's very gentle. So yeah, so I use liquid dirt and like I said, it's a plant food. So because of that, it uh, I can water with the liquid fertilizer, with liquid dirt every time or every other time because it's so gentle and it's organic. So all good. So that's what I do again. So yeah, that is plant number two, easy, easy, easy care. My third one is going to be my skindapsis. So skindapsis, and I would clump skindapsis and pothos um, or epipremnum together. However, I think skindapsis, because they have just a little bit of 
thicker leaves or they can they can tolerate a little bit more drought or more dryness at least that's what i found um i don't know you could kind of lump them together because again they require the same type of needs uh they and here i will show you i'll show you another one so this is a pothos marble queen okay and the requirements for the Marble Queen more specifically do, if you want that variegation or that white, you are going to want to give it more light. However, if you have a darker colored Epipremnum or Pothos, then you can give it less light. Same thing with a, um, with a Scandapsis. This one, again, I have it near a south facing window. However, if I were to put it um, all the way back where it just gets a little bit of light, it will be just fine. Again, make sure it's in a well-draining uh, soil. So at bare minimum, make sure your soil, if you're just using a regular potty mix, make sure you add perlite at the bare minimum. So again, perlite is going to allow the roots to breathe more uh, and give it more aeration, therefore allowing uh better draining soil, which is exactly what these plants want. They don't want a soil that's going to keep a lot of moisture in near their roots because they do like to be dried out. So that's why at the bare minimum, if you're going to use regular potty mix, at least just add some perlite. Again, bare minimum. But yeah, this is another one. Uh, make sure that it is completely dry. And this one, I gotta say, I water about seven to 10 days. So it definitely needs a little bit more water than the ZZ or the snake plant, but that's why this is number three. Um, but if you can see that silver uh, in person, that silver, silver literally like glistens. It's so pretty. And I think it glistens like that, you know, just definitely because it has more light. But again, this is a pretty low light tolerant, low light tolerant plant, but it definitely needs some um, bright light and can handle a bit of direct sun maybe in the morning and it will be good to go. So morning light and same thing with the fertilizer. I just use liquid dirt. So that's every watering or every other watering. Next up for your beginner friendly plants, this one is definitely one of my favorites and it is a Hoya, 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 Hoya. So, you know, I don't normally like to get duplicates of plants because I like to try my hand at new plants, especially because I'm kind of a plant mom, new beginner plant mom too. I mean, I've only been doing this now for a year or so, um, but I've learned a lot too. So I'm teaching you too. But yeah, a Hoya, the, the Hoya Crimson Princess, man, I would definitely get duplicates of this one because I absolutely, absolutely love these. I, I just love it. Look, look at those leaves. They look like they're painted and as an artist too, you just have to appreciate that. Like, oh goodness. So Hoyas shoot out these little tendril looking things. And what you wanna do is make sure you don't cut them because what they'll do is end up turning into leaves. So all this is gonna be a leaf, uh, just like this is, okay? So they're gonna develop, develop leaves. And as you can see that one, that's a little baby leaf coming. So the reason Hoya is number four on my list is because these do need more light. I have this one literally right above me on the south facing window and she does get a lot of light. And I have noticed with a little bit more light, she does grow a lot quicker. And her right now her leaves are not pink, but when they get more light, especially with the new growth that comes in this white cream color is actually really pink so um i'm really excited about this but so this is a hoya crimson princess and just so you know between the difference between the princess and the queen the princess the white is inside 
the queen, the white is outside. That's it. That's the literally the only difference. And I mean, also like the right here, you know, the tendrils are pink as well. I don't know if you can really see that. Oh yeah, you see? They're pink, but that's the best way I can remember is inside princess, outside queen. Inside princess, outside queen. So anywho, so these definitely need more light and they're just a joy. They're a joy to just look at. I just love these so much. Uh, okay, so watering. So that's the light. It definitely needs more light. It doesn't want to be um, super far away from a window. So just make sure that you uh, give it adequate light. Um, and then the more light you give it, the the more sun stress it will get, which basically means that what that pink color will come out and uh, you can just see it more. So that's that one. And as far as the watering goes, this one is even, it's very succulent-like. So these leaves store water, okay? So because those leaves store water, it's, again, it's succulent-like. So you only want to water your uh, Hoya about once, again, once a month, about once a month. I watered mine last month. I checked it actually today and um it still doesn't need water it's still not completely dry that's another thing you want to make sure that your hoya is completely dry but pretty much all hoyas are going to be really easy that way so near a window give it light and wait to water it about once a month or wait to water it until it's completely, completely dry. Now, if you have it in terracotta, you will probably need to water it a little bit more, but I have a mine in like, in like a plastic hanging basket. And I think that's why I haven't needed to, no, excuse me, I don't think, I know that's why I haven't needed to water it so often. So this is another really, really great one. If you can get yourself a Hoya, I would definitely recommend that one as your first, first plant because it's so pretty. You can just put it by a window um, and let it do its thing. And, oh, and fertilizing, again, I use liquid dirt. So uh, maybe I should try some other fertilizers to give you a little bit more, um, to give you some more information on that but with liquid dirt it's just so easy it doesn't i don't have to worry about when or i don't have to worry about all the other stuff i just water with liquid dirt every time or every other time again depending on how much i have on hand so that's another great one way oh soil so we went over lighting we went over watering with the hoya now soil hoyas really really like to have a chunky mix so if you're gonna get a hoya i would recommend adding some not only some perlite but some orchid bark in that mix to make it even chunkier because they really do not like to be uh, moist at all they don't like to stay moist they like to dry out between waterings and that's why you can only you don't have to water about uh, once a month or you don't have to worry about watering so much because you're only watering about once a month so definitely definitely make sure you put it in a chunky mix add those amenities i would highly suggest it and another thing about hoyas is they like to stay snug so once you pot it up in a new uh, pot you're not gonna have to worry about repotting it for like two to three years so they like to be a little bit more on the root bound. And this is good because Hoyas flower and this also helps them push out more growth. So mine hasn't flowered. I've only had her for about four months. No, I've only had her for about two months, but she has been an absolute or two to three months. But she has been an absolute joy to take care of. Uh, I understand now why there's such a big craze over Hoyas is they're so easy and they're so beautiful to look at. So highly, highly, highly recommend out of all of these, no, just kidding, not out of all of these plants. I just, because I love all of them, but I do highly recommend Hoya. 
So easy, easy care. Now, again, a little bit more light, but easy, easy care. Succulents, succulents. So this in particular is an Allogasteria and she just, I don't know if, can you, this right there that I'm pointing at. Oh, you can see it better over here, okay. So these little pups pop up all around her. Now I've had this Allogasteria for exactly uh, a year or a little bit over a year now and Oh my gosh, has been so, 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 so easy. It has been one of the easiest plants to take care of. And yes, it does need a little bit more light. So she sits right by my south facing window. She sits right by the window. But my boyfriend also has one of these two that I left him. And that one sits by a west facing window but it is by a window it originally was by a north facing window however it it was okay like it, it was fine but once we moved her from a north facing window to the west facing window which gets afternoon texas sunlight it started popping out babies because mine was popping out babies left and right <laughs> and he was like i don't understand why mine isn't we've had it for the same time and i went over checked it out and yeah it definitely was the window because once we moved it and plus it's growing season it just it started popping out babies it started getting a little bit wider so it definitely wants more light uh, again this is why this is more towards the end in the higher light situation however these need water again like once a month once maybe every 10 days and i have it in terracotta now because i just wanted to make sure it was really really dry now what's cool about this is you can actually get like a cacti soil and uh, add your amenities such as perlite or bark um i have it in organic potting mix a little bit of cacti soil perlite and bark and or it just gives it a really chunky mix because again these do not like to be uh, moist at all they like to dry out they're succulent and the, what suck what that means is that they hold water up here so because they hold water up here they don't need a lot of water so again another great one however it just requires more light so if you can give it the light Oh my gosh, easy, easy, easy. One of the easiest. And I know that some people may disagree with me as far as succulents being good for beginners, but if you have the light and you remember to only water once a month or when the soil is absolutely, absolutely dry, then you'll be good to go. You can't go wrong. And what I do, especially with the drainage holes, what I like to do is just check the bottom right here. And if it is a little bit moist, I leave it alone. Like right now, it's a little bit moist. I'll leave it alone. I think on this one, I haven't, it's almost going to be two months that I haven't watered it and it's thriving. So highly, highly recommend if you can make sure you give it again, the right light conditions and uh, just make sure you don't water until everything is completely completely dry you'll be good to go as far as fertilizing goes again i use liquid dirt but um you can use whatever fertilizer you like and i would just recommend that now that okay just kidding so that i do know if you are going to use like a um either the ball like the ball <laughs> There is a couple different fertilizers. So there is a slow release that you can mix in with your soil. Um, so that's, I guess that's a bit easier. Uh, if there is liquid fertilizer out there that you can use and you would just need to dilute it, follow the instructions. And I would just suggest diluting it um, because the, those more intense fertilizers can burn your roots uh, of the plant. So the roots of the plant, and that's exactly why I don't mess with any of that. I don't want to worry about burning the roots of my plant again and that's why i use uh, liquid dirt next up is kind of the same in the succulent uh, mix but it's uh, cacti okay so this is one of my cacti the other one i have outside because it's about to be the summer and it's texas and cacti love love light and i don't know oh here you go you can kind of see 
that this baby is growing a baby right here. Yeah, you see? You see? So, um, again, I have both of these in terracotta. Same type of light requirements, same type of water, watering requirements. Now, this one, because it is a little bit smaller, I do have to water it more often than I even have to water the uh, succulent. But about once a month is exactly how I uh, water this one. It needs to be completely dry, again, in a well-draining, chunky mix. Uh, mainly just the well draining part because these don't like to be moist and again if you can give it the adequate light you'll be good to go so very high so very high light well draining soil you can fertilize however you'd like to um, it's good especially th these you only I think when I fertilize though during in the warmer seasons though but other than that really really easy and it just thrives on neglect so if you just want some, if you have the lighting and you want to bring a cacti into your home, go for it, do it because you're not going to have to worry about humidity. You don't have to worry about it is, it is just there. Or if you want to add some stuff outside, cacti are great, but yeah, cacti, cacti is another great one. The last one I have for you for easy, beginner friendly, but highlight this one. This one also, I'm absolutely in love with those leaves. They look like they're painted and man, she has, she's growing right now. She has another gro growth point coming out here. Um, let me see. You can barely, yeah, it's just right here. But she has another growth point coming out right there and she's been so easy uh that's actually her permanent home <laughs> is right behind me here on the window seal but she has been so so incredibly easy i was a little bit nervous i thought this plant was going to be more finicky now this is the ficus elastica tiniki uh, I don't know about the, I cannot speak on the other ficuses, um, so I'm only, only speaking on the taniki because this has been my experience. One, it puts, it gives me a leaf every two months. I have a new leaf coming in, so that's number one. Number two, it wants to be completely dry before I water it, so again, another plant that I've only needed to water about once a month to once maybe even a, maybe even a little bit longer than once a month like almost a little less than two months for sure um but again as long as it's completely dry i've only needed to repot her once and i just put her up a size just a little bit um because i really 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 wanted her to stay in this pot because i love the green contrast with her green leaves i just i think that that just looks really good um so i was really happy that she didn't really need much more room she just needed a little bit more wide of, of room so anyways as long as you can give this one the light because again this isn't a south facing window um you might be able to you you can probably get away with with east or west facing window i'm not so sure how she would do on a north facing window i think like if you live in the south she'll be okay but if you if you have yours in a north facing window by all means let me know how she's doing maybe she's just a little bit of a slower grower than if you were to have her in a brighter condition i'm sure she'll be just fine but yes this one especially to keep those beautiful yellow leaves she definitely needs that light so as long as you can give her that light. So yeah, this one has to be probably right next again. And that's why it's right next to uh, the cacti is because it needs such high light. So yeah. And uh, again, same thing with the fertilizer. I would recommend fertilizing during the growing seasons or warmer seasons, excuse me. 
and um, cut back during the winter and the watering definitely cut back during the winter. But just make sure this one is also in a well draining mix. Uh, make sure that it completely dries out. You don't have to worry about humidity, just your normal household humidity will actually be fine for all of the plants that I've listed for you. And that's why these plants are part of my level one beginner house plants for you guys. I wanted to make sure that I gave you the absolute, absolute easiest, but not all the ba basics. Um, and that's another reason why I added the Taniki to this list because she really has been really easy and i've officially had this um ficus sneaky for about six months now so she has grown significantly um i did give her a little uh, support right here um because she does kind of just like flop so just make sure you give them support so that way they can grow up but other than that so so easy like i was so surprised on how easy this plant has been for me how much this plant has actually grown for me sometimes also when they come in they uh they're a little bit pink right and then they harden off and they get yellow so just so you're aware i can see this one uh, has a little bit of pink so um but yeah kind of like the hoya princess so so anyways, that's it for my level one. I wanted to make sure, again, that I give you plants that you won't uh, have to worry about the watering schedule. You know, they're all plants that are very forgiving. They're all plants that you only have to water about once a month, maybe even longer, depending on your light conditions. Not too worried about the fertilizer there. And the lighting conditions, again, I went from low light to highest light. So at least you have some options on what you can put on your home as a level one beginner house plant. So if you stuck with me to the end, I appreciate it. You are awesome. You, you, you. That's right. You're awesome. And yeah, just until next time, I hope you'll have a wonderful day. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And yeah, keep it artsy and I'll see you next time. Bye.